Hi, my name is Dr. Natalia Bogopolska. Hi, I'm Jennifer Gans. Hi, I'm Dr. Kendria Hart. We are school psychologists who work with children and teens of all ages and varied backgrounds with and without disabilities. We also work with teachers and parents on students' academic, behavioral, and emotional needs. Today, we want to talk about common experiences that parents and children are having during this global pandemic and strategies to help your family through this time. We are school-based mental health professionals, but the tips given here are just that, tips. If you are concerned about your child's mental health, please consult a licensed or credentialed mental health provider. It's hard to believe that just a month ago, many of us had never heard of coronavirus or COVID-19. Now, a recent poll by ABC News and the Washington Post reports, 77% of Americans indicated COVID-19 has been a disruption to their lives. 69% report feeling worried. With this drastic change, many children are trying to adjust to this new normal. Some are experiencing anxiety, lower motivation, and lack of productivity. For kids and adults, it can be difficult to be focused on assignments when you have your television, your bed, your kitchen, your cell phone, your family and friends, and the enticing allure of video games just steps away. Parents are also feeling strained and trying to work from home, manage daily responsibilities, and support their children in this new remote learning model. You are not alone. Hopefully the tips and strategies in this video will help you during this time. Number one, be kind and patient with yourself and those around you. During times of crisis, our feelings are often intense and unpredictable. Your kids might be dancing to a TikTok video one minute when you enter the kitchen and then screaming at one another by the time the toaster goes off. Take some deep breaths and remember that each person in your home, including you, is experiencing this differently. Life feels like a roller coaster and we're all going at different speeds as we try to establish a sense of normal. It's important to take things one day or maybe one cup of coffee at a time. Number two, limit your consumption of news and media. Yes, it is important to stay informed about how to keep you and your family safe. However, numerous studies have indicated that overconsumption of news and media can increase anxiety, especially when the information is stressful and or negative. In addition to safeguarding your own mental health, Remember that you are the safety net for your children. They take their cues from you. So yes, keep them informed about what's going on in an age appropriate manner, but also try to ensure a sense of safety and security. Number three, engage in healthy practices and self-care. This can include both physical and emotional. Exercise, walks, check-ins, mindfulness, meditation, and following CDC recommendations such as washing hands and wearing facial coverings. Brainstorm some healthy choices your child can make when feeling stressed or anxious. Your child can also create a healthy choice book or chart. For example, I feel angry. Why? Because I can't go to the playground today. What can you do instead? I can play a board game? In this way, you've identified the feeling the reason for that feeling, and a healthy choice alternative. If you haven't yet, establish a daily routine. Don't worry about everything you've seen on Facebook or heard that your best friend is doing. You don't need every second planned. However, posting a basic outline on the fridge for things like meals, academics, free time, and chores, those things will help you to establish a system. Do what works for your family but anticipate that things are gonna to continue to change. Daily rituals are helpful, but will look different for each household. Set a time every day to check in with each person in your home. For preteens and teens who may not be as open to talking, ask them to text you an emoji about how they're feeling. And any age child can have a laugh responding to a silly animal picture or meme like this one of my dog Charm. Number five, set small and attainable goals. Even if it's something routine like doing a chore, such as washing the dishes, that can still feel like a success. It can also be something fun, like calling a friend or playing a game with the family. 
recognize that your supports may be different right now. You're not necessarily seeing the same people that you're used to. Every day will be different. Allow yourself to make mistakes, but also celebrate your successes. Maybe one task is just 5% better than it was a previous day, and that's okay. Number six, make sure you take time to identify the things that bring you peace and happiness and do those things. You may already know what they are, but you may not. This may be an opportunity for self-discovery. You may find that you're enjoying reading, cooking, dancing, playing games, socializing with your family. Yep, binge watching that favorite show. Whatever it is that brings you peace and happiness, this is the time to engage in those activities. It's also good to model those behaviors for your children so they too know how to discover what brings them peace and happiness. Number seven, focus on the positive. When it seems like all is going wrong, we often forget to reflect on what's going right. One strategy that I've brought from school to home is a daily gratitude journal. Great for all ages. With younger kids, start by asking them to name or draw what makes them happy. In my house, furry friends are always on the list. We also post positive sayings and sticky note affirmations. I am strong is currently stuck to the bathroom mirror as a reminder to say positive things aloud as you lather up. Sesame Street also has a catchy new song and a video with a positive spin on hand washing. Number eight, stay connected. Social distancing physically doesn't mean social distancing emotionally. Now more than ever, it's super important to stay connected with our loved ones, whether they live with us or they don't. Pick up the phone and call that friend or family member that you may not have talked to in a while. Check on them, see how they're doing. It's also an opportunity to express your feelings. Definitely have conversations with your loved ones who live with you. Thank goodness for social media, cell phones, and internet that help us to connect with people no matter where they are. Don't let COVID-19 dominate your conversations. As for me, I'm getting ready to call my sister in Atlanta now so she can tell me what she thought about that last episode of our favorite show. Number nine, stay in tune with yourself and make adjustments when needed. Mindfulness is a state that helps you focus on what's happening in the moment, your thoughts, your feelings, and in your body. Allow yourself and your child to have some alone time, maybe even some personal space to self-regulate. Take a mindfulness walk. Visualize a safe and preferred space, maybe your actual physical office, the basketball court, the beach, whatever it is for you. Stop and do a self-check-in. What am I feeling right now? What do I need? Find something in the house that can be felt by all five senses. Mindfulness is all about being present right now. Number 10. Seek support and give support. During this time, many families are experiencing significant financial and emotional stress. If you or your children are experiencing significant stress, please reach out for help. Resources are available. Check local government sites as well as trusted organizations. Also try contacting school staff who may have access to resources that may assist you. If you're in a position to help others, Start with those you know. In addition, you may also reach out to organizations that are taking donations. However, please make sure these are trusted organizations. We hope that you have found some of these strategies helpful. This is a great image from the counselingteacher.com for children and adults to visualize what is and is not in our control at this time with COVID-19. This graphic addresses many of the concerns and strategies we've talked about today. We've given you some strategies, but we acknowledge that there are barriers in every home. No matter what we do, some days may still have stressors and feel unsuccessful, but you're already doing so much. Consider what is and what is not in our control. We have more control over what we do at home. We cannot control everything that is happening with COVID-19. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Sending you peace and blessings.